let's see. All right, so welcome back once again to our live session today. So in today's video, we are going to look at part X question on introduction to business statistics. So do all to share the video, like it as well, so others will get a benefit to always to join us. Sorry for the delay. So we are about starting very soon and we're going to look at introduction to business statistics in that line. So thank you for joining once again on our channel today. So let me share my screen so we get started in that line. Let's look at question number one. So it goes like, the process of using data collected from a small group to reach a conclusion about a large group is called so what is that so let's see in the comment section what is the correct answer for this the process of using data collected from a small, a small group to reach a conclusion about a large group is called so a we have statistical inference b we have scientific matter c we have sampling d we have what we have a uh, discrete statistics so what is the right answer so here the process of using small data to reach Conclusion by a large group is what called a statistical word, uh, a statistical inference. So the correct answer is what? The correct answer is what? A. Sorry. The correct answer is A in that line. So let's take note of that. A. The correct answer here is what? Is A. Question number two. Sorry for that. So let's move on to next. Question number two, a data set is a collection of data values with each value in a data set called, a data set is a collection of data values with each value in a data set called, so we have A, that team, B, we have an attribute C, we have a variable and D, we have an event. So which of them is the correct answer to this particular word question? So a data set is a collection of what data value with each value in a data set called, so here, the right answer here is what? A datum. Because we said a datum is actually a, a data set in which the data values, I mean, we are talking about each value of the data set in that line. Please do want to share the video and like it as well. So that others will get a benefit to join in that case. So that is a datum. So the correct answer is what? A. Question number three. That the, which of the following variable is discrete? Is discrete, sorry. So we have A. The length of the road b we have time of journey c we have number of oranges in the basket and d we have masses of women so what is the correct answer to this particular question so when we are talking about discrete data we are talking about data which can be what counted right so whenever you hear of a number then you are talking about discrete what data so the correct answer here should be what number sorry the correct answer here should be what option c that is the number of oranges in the basket that is the correct answer for that then question number four another name another name for ogive in statistics is called another name for ogive in statistics is called a frequency polygon b histogram c cumulative frequency polygon and then d we have d we have like CD, do we have Bacha? So which of them is the correct answer? So when I talk about over Ogive, it's part of what a way to present what a data and refer that to to be a what a cumulative frequency polygon. So the correct answer here is what a cumulative frequency polygon. So let's take note of that. Now question number, let's move on. Question number five. Which graph should be used to show relationship between parts and whole? Which graph should be used to show relationship between parts and whole? So, which graph should we use to show relationship between parts and whole? So, we have a histogram, B, we have pie chart, C, we have Pareto graph, and then D, we have Ogai. So, what is the correct answer here in this particular case? So what is the correct answer here in this particular case?
So the correct answer for this should be what? The relation between parts and whole is part of what a way of presenting a set of data, right? And we use that to represent as what? A pie chart. So whenever we talk about a pie chart, pie chart show relationship between what parts and when who so we have a full circle and then we have what various data that has been divided into what part within the full circle so the correct answer here is what a pie chart so let's take note of that if you have any question you can drop in the comment section so the correct answer is what a pie chart so let's take note of that now, question number six: The number of adverts, the number of adverts on one hour television show, is an example of. So, the number of adverts on one hour television show is an example of what type of data? An example of what type of data? So, A, we have a nominal, B, we have quantitative, C, we have discrete, and D, we have continuous. So, here, what is the correct answer? If you actually have watched the previous video that we had. The last time then this question shouldn't be uh, actually a problem for you here so let me see in the comment section any answer for me on that any answer for me on that okay somebody said pie chart i think that was it what about question number six question number six question number six the number of adverts on one hour television show is an example of what type of data so i want to see that so here the correct answer should be what we are talking about number of adverts so we are talking about a discrete what data say so discrete data is a data which can be what counted or countable right that is a discrete what data so let's take note of that so let's move on to question number seven question number seven goes like the larger collection of observation for which one has an interest in a given situation is called the larger collection of observation for which one has an interest in a given situation is called a parameter b sample c population and d frequency distribution so which of them is the correct answer to this particular question so let me see in the comment section if you're actually online please do want to like the video and share it as well so that others will get the benefit to always join us in that particular case so what is the correct answer to this particular question question number seven so yeah the correct answer here since we are interested in larger collection of observation then here yeah, we are interested to what population right so the correct answer is going to what a population since population deal with what collection of large observation or collection of large data so let's take note of that now question number eight we are asked to use this information to answer question eight and then nine what is the level of measurement for a student grade point average so whenever you're talking about student grade point average which level of measurement should we use to measure student grade point? Whenever we are talking about grade point, then we are talking about what more of what ranking, right? Somebody may have grade A, somebody may have grade B, others may have grade C, others may also have what grade D. So it depends on the grade that we are using. Then we we are interested in measuring that using what an ordinary level of what measurement. When we say ordinary level of measurement, deal with what measurement of what uh, data where it takes into account what ranking of what set of what data. So this is what we need to understand going forward. So here the student grade point can be measured using what an ordinary level of measurement. Now question number nine, distance student travel to lectures. What is the answer to this? Distance student travel to lectures is also a type of data. I'm going to use that. So is it nominal? Is it ordinary? Is it ratio or interval? So here we are talking about distance, then we are interested in what? Interval. So the correct answer here is what? Interval. The correct answer here is what? Interval skill of measuring uh, such data. Now, question number 10. The graph of accumulative di distribution is called, the graph of accumulative distribution is called, I think we met the opposite side of this question, where it got, the question was framed in a different way, but here it's straightforward. A graph of a cumulative uh, distribution is called A, a line graph, B, a histogram, C, an ogive, and D, a bar chart. So 
what is the correct answer so the correct answer here is what an ogai if you have any question you can drop in the comment section so we take it from there so let's take note of that then let's move on to question number 11. data collected over a period of time can be graphed using a gantt chart e pie chart c time series graph and d pyrito graph so whenever you are talking about data collected over a period of time then we are interested in what a time series graph so a time series graph is a graph that takes into account collection of data over a certain period of what time for example we want to undertake what data about rainfall rainfall is a seasonal thing it, it always undertaken by what time so you just have to use what a rain gauge to measure the, the amount of rainfall within a particular period of what time so we use time series graph to actually to collect data about uh time for example rainfall as i said in that line so let's take note of that so here the correct answer here is what time series graph now question number 12 the ratio scale of measurement a usually involves ranking b cannot assume negative value c has a meaningful zero and d is usually based on counting so what is the correct answer to this is it involved in ranking cannot assume negative values has a meaningful zero or usually based on count so if you have actually watched our previous video on introduction to statistics you can clearly see that when we we're discussing that we made more emphasis on what a number zero which have a meaningful word, uh, value so in ratio we say that if you have zero amount of money, it means that you have nothing on own. So the zero as a number is what meaningful. So here the correct answer here is what ratio scale of measurement has what a meaningful what, zero. That is option C in that line. So let's take note of that. Now question number 13. Which of the following variables is discrete? Which of the following variables is what is discrete? Whenever you're talking about a discrete data. We are talking about data can be what counted or, or they are said to be what countable or they are said to be countable so we have length of a road time of journey number of oranges in a basket masses of women so which of them will actually meet this definition of a variable which is what a discrete so let me see in the comment section any answer for me on this any answer for me on this any answer for me on the please do want to like the video and share it as well number of oranges in a basket masses of women length of road and time of journey so which of them is the correct answer to this particular question so here the correct answer here is number of what oranges in a basket we are talking about number of oranges in a basket number of oranges in a basket so let's take note of that let's take note of that then let's move on question number 14 a variable that can assume any value between two given values is called a a random variable b a continuous variable c a discrete variable and then d an attribute so when we are talking about what values between two given uh when we are talking about a variable that have for two given values then we are talking about what a continuous what variable we are talking about a continuous variable so let's take note of that so that is question 14 then question 15 a nominal level of measurement classify data into a categories with other b non-overlapping categories c categories with relevant ratios and d mutually inclusive what categories so which of them is the correct answer to this particular question? Let's see in the comment section if you have any answer for me so that we take it from there. So what is the correct answer to this particular question? So here whenever you're talking about nominal level, we said nominal level has to do with one key feature about nominal level here is that it deal with what uh it deal with the issue about group membership. So once you're not part of the group, 
you can't be so if you're a male you mate as a male if you're a female you mate as female if you're a christian all things being equal you, you mean as what well a christian if you're a muslim you mean as what well a, a muslim religion affects okay so whenever you're talking about nominal level if you put them in circle you can clearly see that if you are in circle a you find yourself in circle a if you are in circle b you find yourself in circle b and so therefore the two circles cannot what overlap so we say that in nominal level of measurement data are non-overlapping what categories mean that we can't put two data together right because of what the issue about group membership so this is what we need to understand when it comes to a nominal so the correct answer here is what non-overlapping category non-overlapping category so let's take note of that let's take note of that let's take note of that any question so these are just a few questions that you actually strive from the introductory part of all the business statistics if you have any question for me let's see in the comment section so i know how to respond to it in that line so there's our end of presentation it's a short one so if you have any question let me see in the comment section and then sorry for any disturbance or uh distraction that actually uh did okay at the beginning part of uh, this presentation actually it wasn't our fault but we needed to sort out certain two or three things that uh, i need to make everything work and i can even hear that the sound is not all that okay but at least we're able to hear what i said so i hope that next time we're able to fix that uh problem and then have a perfect uh, environment to discuss and learn well in that line so if today is your first time on the channel please do watch subscribe to the channel like it as well so that others will get a benefit to also to watch from us so please share the video to as many students as possible who may be interested in this kind of presentation so that i can help them to become academically successful so i will see you next session bye bye